what is going on youtube nameless here and man it has been a while let me tell you did i missed you guys the season was phenomenal our breakdown videos were great throughout the majority of the season but i've been on hiatus all right i've been doing some things i bought a house you know i've been having some fun doing a lot of shows and it was really time consuming doing a lot of these videos but now i have a ton of time to do videos so i figured why not uh and let's bring back some call of duty content so if you guys enjoy these videos make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe and uh we'll continue to do more as long as time permits but hey let's get into it man because i have not been in the loop since cod champs i have been chillaxing all right i've been relaxing doing my thing the season is obviously a long grind and when it was done I took about a week, week and a half break to just relax and, and do me for a little bit, okay? But now I'm plugged back in, I'm locked in, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go through all these moves, give my 30,000 level overview opinion on what's going on. Uh, and then as we make these videos and get more into it, uh, we can get more detailed uh, analytical views on what's going on and what teams should do, and basically roster mania. So uh, bear with me on this, guys. Let's have some fun, though, all right? All right, bang. So I just wanted to find a... Uh, first of all, let me say this. I went through all this stuff. Like, I saw it as it was happening live on Twitter. People going crazy, all the stuff that happened. Um, in this video, I'm going, like I said, to just look at all these things and update a lot of the people who maybe used to come to my YouTube channel just for updates and things going on in the Call of Duty scene and give you guys just my opinion on what basically what's going on. Uh, but there will be more detailed videos that I'm going to be coming out with in the, in the coming days on what's happened. Uh, you know, obviously the formal thing was wild. It made me super sad when I first read it, uh, things like that. There'll be videos just straight up for those topics. But this is basically just going to be an all in one. Uh, I thought it'd be a good idea for the comeback vid. So uh, let's go through all this, man, because a lot of stuff happened in this last week and a half in Roster Mania. Uh, I can't think of a Roster Mania that was this nuts. Uh, maybe when the, we first franchised, it was pretty crazy. Uh, all the teams got shaken up a bit, but nothing quite like this. Uh, so let's go through. Uh, Seattle Surge, I mean, they squad wiped, right? So Octane, Prasini, Classic, Gunless, all gone. Free agents. Uh, Looney, retired. Uh, he would make a fantastic coach somewhere. I got mad love for Danny. I think he's a great guy. Knows a lot about the game. Uh, he has a great rapport with all the players. I think it, it would be a missed opportunity on a lot of these teams if Looney doesn't land a spot somewhere doing something. Uh, even GM, I think he'd be good at roster building. Uh, he's really good at removing himself from the situation. So I just had to get a quick Looney plug in there. Uh, looking at the rest of this team, uh, it's hard to imagine Classic finding a, a roster after the years that he's had, how inconsistent he was. I know that he had a great uh event right but it was versus not that many great teams and then obviously the big series against phase which was great but i don't think it was enough uh i think classic would be a fantastic substitute player on a roster um just because the knowledge that he has the dedication that he has and he can come in and ball out if you really need him to right so i think he'd be a great sub so he does have a future obviously in call of duty still he doesn't need to retire uh octane will find a team pristini it's a weird one there. I, I know he has a ton of potential, but once again, he is a bit inconsistent. Uh, but lately, he has been finding his motivation. Uh, he's been, he played well pretty much for the majority of the second half of the season. Uh, the team was just broken. So I think there's one more opportunity there for Prestini. I think a lot of people will still look at him and realize what he's capable of. And he'd probably get a sub spot. And if a team's struggling, maybe get a starting spot on one of the lesser teams. And if he balls out from there... Who knows what can happen but i i think he still has opportunity to restore his uh his his rating within the community and his stock but it's going to be very tough it's going to be an upwards grind uh gunless i think gunless is a baller uh, i think gunless is one of the best players we have uh in call of duty uh, obviously that wasn't on full display throughout the entirety of these last two years but i think that there were some moments and some glimpses of the old gunless this year and going into a dub dub two game i think that raises his stock to a level where he should be getting on a team and rightfully so honestly i mean if you think about the three games prior to this lat these last ones like he was the best player in those games at some point right so gunless can ball out with any weapon uh i think now gunless has gotten to a point where he's also figured out the mental side of things uh so for him uh i'm hearing that he's a better teammate and things like that and just from what you're seeing like he's putting in a lot of work um he's not really been involved in any crazy drama like he once was so if he's figured that out and also can still perform like he was 
pre in previous years like it's a no-brainer that gunless would be an asset to any team um i just think you have to make sure you have really good smgs around gunless because that is when he truly shines is when his smgs are on point and he doesn't have to be the super fry man right moving down the uh, nubsy is also a free agent coach um good luck to him uh revan also a free agent coach now i know a lot of these things when people say that they're a free agent it's just because their contracts expired and they want to have negotiating power right because that happens in anything right it even happens on air talent and esports and things like that like when you're Contracts up, you go and you shop other offers, right? And then you hope that the people that you've been with or whatever you want to do comes with the right offer and then you stay there, right? So I don't know what's going on with the NYSL thing. Like I said, guys, I am like not super plugged in right now. I've been texting people and things like that. Um, I could, but I just have not been doing that, right? I'm letting everybody do their own thing, letting all the madness erupt. And then when the dust settles, I'll come in, right? And figure all, all that stuff out. So like I said, 30,000 foot overview of this, but for Revan, um, I, I think he likes New York, right? Like, I, it seems like he was happy on New York. Uh, so for me, without any information, I look at this and think that Revan is just trying to get another offer from somewhere. So he has some negotiating power and then he can pick his team from there, right? I would assume that NYSL would prefer to have Revan back. He is an absolute professional. He's great on camera, great behind the team. The players have great things to say about him. So good luck to Revan, right? Um, looking at Paris, uh, they squad wiped. You got Aqua, Temp, Zap, you Scraps. I mean, I think Scraps and Temp will find a team uh, for Zap. Uh, I think it's back to challengers for him. And then for Aqua, substitute maybe somewhere. I think the issue with Aqua is that he's just in the it's been quite some time since he's been like frying right like he had those few events in the beginning like he was actually legit playing very well with the AR but it's too inconsistent. Uh, his teams always have a mode where they're just not great at whatsoever and he's just been struggling so I think Aqua finds a substitute spot somewhere or he'll choose to go play in challengers and just dominate from there I did see some weird treat tweets out of Aqua though where he was saying like he doesn't know if he's done or he might be done or he doesn't like to gossip or or honey whatever you know what the word is uh so I'm not exactly sure what he will be doing so maybe when we go into our detailed videos he'll we'll have an update on that and i'll give you guys sort of my opinion there but as of right now i don't think that he de he's deserving of a starting spot on a roster uh looking down uh crim six and vivid all right so these guys restricted free agents um now i understand the vivid one right because vivid was very good but i think that there's another level that empire could have gotten to with a different player i could honestly see them there and contesting with phase back and forth i think they're just like uh, other than ultra like the closest team there and for them i could see why they would want to get rid of vivid for crim six i don't exactly know why they're doing that um you know i get like like why teams would make decisions to release their their expensive players and the older players like a crim six right like crim costs a lot of money to pay um he is if you looked at his career on a chart he would be on the downhill in terms of that but he still has years left he still performs very well um i'm not exactly sure what empire is doing with that uh, unless this optic dallas thing is real which i'm hearing is real okay now that's something i can say is i've heard that that is potentially real um that is actually something that might happen so if that is true and that happens and that makes sense and that would be like the only world where I, I make sense of this because I think Krim is a phenomenal player, deserving of being on a team. It's like the Tom Brady thing. It's like you give him whatever he wants until he says he's done playing, right? That's what I would do. Uh, but I could see how an organization could justify it in some way. Um, but that's wild right there. Um, but moving on, uh, Envoy or free agent, that's pretty crazy as well. Uh, I think Envoy is one of the best players in the game. Uh, his potential is unlimited. He's young. He's very intelligent. He's good at all the game modes, uh, and he's willing to work through an issue and what he proved this year. Uh, he's the year a couple years ago, like the guy was on a team with unknown players and made it into the pro league and was one of the best teams in the game. And then he ends up on Optic Chicago in a very short span, um, where he wins the championship last year and they're just playing fantastic, uh, for, well, he was playing pretty good throughout this year. Like they were a top four team. Like they were pretty good. Uh, obviously you expect a lot of optic Chicago and they didn't quite get it throughout the year, but like they were still pretty damn good team. And Envoy was a big reason for that. When he performed great, they got really good. So um, he's proven that he can fight through any circumstance, which I think is very impressive on top of him being a shot caller for experienced veteran players that can be very intimidating. I think he is an asset to any team and uh, anybody who has potential to be like one of the, be the best player in the game or top five player 
great SMG. Like he's one of the hottest commodities in the market right now, bar none. Uh, former retiring, that is just insane to me, man. Uh, I hope he gets n everything he wants in retirement. He's gonna be a great um, content creator, but man, it just saddens me to see that. Uh, but we'll have a whole video dedicated to that. That's my guy. Uh, LAG, squad wipe. Okay, so Apathy, Assault, Chino, Mental, and Silly. Um, just sort of going down this list here. App, I, I could see him getting a starting spot on a roster. It'd have to be the right team, though. Like, it'd have to be some very good young talent with a ball and AR player that picks up Apathy um, and can bring new life into him, teach the old dog new tricks. Uh, I think App is still has that fight in him. He had some big moments, but he probably ends up a substitute player on a roster if i'm being honest um just because he just hasn't had the results um for assault uh, i mean he's a, a main ar right like he's not gonna win you a game not really gonna lose you a game so if a team needs a plug-in player uh assault could be that guy i just see that there's a lot of ars and a lot of flex players that are also probably willing to become a main ar so i don't see assault also getting a starting spot but it's possible that he gets a substitute spot or put in somewhere uh chino uh you know another question mark for me uh for chino i think he has the ability to be a starting player on a roster i thought he was great on lag didn't quite get a fair chance which has honestly been the story most of Chino's career. Uh, and to be honest, he's just probably a bit too nice if we're being honest here. So I really am rooting for Chino. I hope somebody gives him the respect he deserves, but likely gets a substitute spot as well. Mental, uh, not a great performance. I was very high on mental, especially on this channel. I know you guys saw my videos, um, but he did come into a broken team. Um, he'll probably end up back in challengers if he decides to play. Uh, and then silly, uh, you know, he has a lot of uh, friends who support him and stuff like that. So maybe he gets back on a team. Uh, he wasn't terrible by any means. The team just wasn't that great. Um, so maybe he gets a substitute spot as well. But after seeing what this team has done the last two years, if anybody on this team like outright gets a starting spot besides Apathy, I would be pretty mind blown. Um, shout out mind blown, but we'll see. We will see. Um, the Academy team gets released as well. Clearing up cap space. Clearly, LAG is looking to make a big move, which they have to do. So, honestly, really like uh, the general management move here. Finally, LAG going to try to do something. They're going to have to throw some big money around now, though. Uh, moving on, London Royal Ravens. Um, so, Alex, Zed, Shawnee, and Paul X, all free agents. Uh, pretty crazy moves for them. Uh, they get rid of the young and upcoming talent, Paul X. I think he's a baller, certified baller. Uh, I, I, I'm sad to see him go. Um, Shawnee as well. I think that's a good move. Uh, Shawnee didn't have a great year. I don't think he's, um, you know, I don't want to say he's not fit to be a leader. I just don't think that, uh, that was the right team. I think they were broken from the beginning, uh, for London Roy Ravens. It was tough for them. Their roster wasn't what they expected to have. Shawnee kind of got thrown into the, uh, thrown against the ropes there, having to lead a, a makeshift roster throughout the year with some youngins, something he wasn't really that experienced at. Um, so it was tough for them. Um, but after the performance, it's hard to deny the moves that they made. Like they had to do it. Um, so I respect these decisions, clearing up some space, saving some money so they can get another roster. They have zero on the team, which is, well, they, I think they have zero. No, I don't think zero's on the team, but they're going to try to get zero is what we're hearing. So if they do get him or if he's already confirmed, you guys let me know in the comments, that would be fantastic because I think zero is amazing. Great guy, great player. One of the best to ever come out of Europe. And that's the start they need undoubtedly um shane also a free agent great guy uh, not sure how good of a coach he is i assume he's great he competed um i could talk to that guy about call of duty at the end of time um but hoping for the best for him methods a free agent now it's weird with zinn because i think he's a great player um it's just i wonder what his stock is like amongst the pro players i have to figure out because looking at zinn i mean it's easy to look at him and be like he's just a content creator he's out there living his life and where does his passion truly reside and for me, he's one of my best friends. I know he really wants to compete and be the best in the game, but he also ha does have a passion for content creation. So that can be a slippery slope there and a weird line um, for him. And honestly, he's just gonna have to decide what he wants to do. Um, he can do both at the same time, but he's gonna have to prove that to a pro roster that's willing to give him an opportunity. He's gonna have to convince them uh, that it's worth it, right? And now obviously from an organizational standpoint, he's a fantastic pickup because the guy has a ton of fans. Um, but for some of the players that could probably look at that and be like, this might be hard, um, to deal with. So we'll see. Uh, and then diamond con also a free agent. I mean, the guy's a true professional first year in what he had to deal with and what he did for New York subliners was spectacular. Um, so I'm looking at him to come back. Uh, diamond con's a pretty good player, right? For year one, 
I, I, you can't expect too much out of out of a player you run. Like obviously, there's your standout players, like your standees and your insights. But from majority of your players, like you don't come in and win tournaments and dominate like that. So for Diamond Con, the first couple of events that he had, first couple of matches, like he played good. And when he came in, he still played pretty solid. So um, he's no Clayster, right? And we were saying that, but Clayster has ten times the amount of experience as Diamond Con. So uh, for people that were harping on him for not playing up to those standards, like how can you expect him to do that? Uh, so for Diamond Con, I think he finds a substitute spot on the roster. Maybe does the same thing he did this year, but he has potential to get better. So it'll be up to that organization to gauge how he's doing um either on their academy team or on their or you know just in the game in general and bring them in when they need him or as they see fit uh but yeah i mean this is basically i'll put this link to the description on reddit uh reddit cod reddit has been absolutely jumping lately um like i guess we're in the off season right now and i just kind of check it every so often to see what's going on um but now we're back on this content grind right and we have more time so we'll be uploading more videos we'll be keeping up with more stuff um, not going on any more trips anytime soon. But yeah, I mean, that's basically all the information uh, and the moves that have been made so far. Now, after I get more info in the next seven videos, I'll tell you guys what I think these guys should do. And then it'll get a lot more spicy. So I appreciate your guys' support. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. But until the next video, signing out. Peace, everybody.